day one, 94 inches on day one, today had 97 and a quarter inches, I believe we had three 97 inch limits today, Matt Ball caught one and then Matt Ball missed a uh, paycheck by a quarter of an inch, so 191 and a quarter inches for his weekend's total, in second place from Tennessee, taking home $3,800, Russ Stein. <laughs> I saw it was you, brother, so I grabbed the champion just out of uh, pure habit. So, uh, Russ, we appreciate you. Uh, you're obviously, you know, state champion, Hobie check casher, KBF check casher, you know, last match check casher. So, I mean, you know, just, just say whatever you want, buddy. You earned it. Yeah. Um, yeah what, what a week. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd say this is probably the best best week of smallmouth fishing I've, I've had in my life. I don't know. Every day they were, they were just chewing and. Uh, you know, I, I saw going into the tournament, we had some kind of, I guess, unseasonably hot weather, I guess, for, for the first several days of pre-fishing. It was just dead calm and really hot. And I saw what that forecast was doing over the weekend. So once I, I kind of saw what they were, you know, uh, they were eating pretty good. I found a few baits that were working and uh, really spent, I'd say, o over 50% of my time not even fishing. I just, uh, I just run that Torquedo. Um, and just zigzag pretty much just back and forth all over the place and I marked everything I could whether it was a, a shoal, a big boulder, a rock pile, uh, you know, or, or a lay down or, or anything. I think in, um, you know, I went, I, once I kind of figured out where I wanted to fish, I actually went back there a second day and about a three mile stretch, I think I marked 300 waypoints probably. And I'm glad I did that because if, if I didn't do that, I, I definitely wouldn't wouldn't have been up here. Because uh, yeah, once that that wind came and those clouds came and uh, you know all those targets, I wouldn't wouldn't be able to see. So uh, and every day I ran, you know, usually I would only bring one torpedo battery uh, for a tournament. I you know, and this was I think first time I uh, yeah first time I I used two torpedo batteries every day and just I covered covered a lot of water um, and come tournament day uh, you know pretty much it was two baits it was a mag draft and a, and a Nico rig I would um, yeah just cover water and just hit every single waypoint and I'd just make like two or three or four casts you know on on each waypoint and uh, either they'd, they'd slam the, uh, the swim bait or uh, sometimes they'd miss it, and then I'd just go back with the Nico rig. Nico rig was a Z-Man uh, bang stick with a little eighth ounce weight. Uh, and I caught actually the first day three. My all three of my biggest fish were uh, were on the Nico, and then uh, today today was was crazy. I got to to the spot I I did the best on yesterday, and in 32 minutes I put up 95 inches. And in that time, I also lost four fish that were also, you know, 18 and a half to 20 inches as well that came off. What was, was that flurry on? It was on a mag draft. Everything. I, the only thing I got bit on today was a mag draft. The travel or single hook? Like single. I threw the single hook because I, I did miss over 50% of my bites I'd miss, but I just wanted something that can, that wouldn't get hung up, that I can get through the grass and uh, through the, the wood and the rocks and stuff like that. So they, you know... The, the mouths aren't very, you know, they call them smallmouth for a reason, so it's, it's hard for a smallmouth to get a bait that size sometimes, so, um, but, um, but yeah, I stuck with that. A lot of my area is kind of muddied up, so um, I'm glad to think about this rivers, you know, in a, a certain stretch of river, you'll, you'll have muddy and clear water. It'll be muddy on one side and clear on the other. 
Uh, so I was glad I, I kind of marked waypoints in both because some of the stuff was, was a little blown out. Maybe I threw a chatterbait or something like that. They would have ate it in the mud. I don't know. But for the, for the swim bait, I, I needed to get a little bit, kind of that stained water is what I was looking for. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to, and I was throwing it on a I-Rod uh, Gen 3, the Junior Swim. It's a 7 foot 9 uh, swim bait rod. And so love that rod. Threw, uh, fishing it with 20-pound fluorocarbon. Uh, Seaguar, and uh, also like to um, yeah, thank my sponsors, uh, Yak Attack, Music City Outdoors, Catch Outdoors, um, I Rod Fishing, Dakota Lithium. Uh, I'm really grateful for all they've done for me and for what they do to support Bassmaster. Um, um, and I'd like to thank you, Steve-O. Thank you for all you've done. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Hey folks, day after the Susquehanna Bassmaster Kayak Series tournament and uh got the set of my eyes. <laughs> yeah, you did. That was, you, got, uh, you got angler of the year, man. I did. It all came down to this last Russ. tournament. And this year's Bassmaster Kayak Series Angler of the Year presented by Dakota Lithium with 746 points, Russ Snyder. Thank you, Jeff. Came down to this last one. I wanted to put a lot of work in to just try to figure things out, and uh, and uh, yeah, and it, and it and it paid off. I uh, got Angler of the Year. And it was your best three out of the five uh, tournaments for the year. And uh, there's a couple other guys. And this was a second this is the fifth place. And you got second place. I got second place one. in this tournament. Yeah, I should nice. have had that, I guess. So uh, it was, you know, the timing for this tournament was just unbelievable. Uh, it's here, it's early October. And uh, it's, uh, from what I hear, it just was, yeah, yeah, it's about as good it as it gets here. It was optimal because they, they released the... Uh, the air from the Faber Dam up there, the inflatable yeah. dam up, up, you know. Created a lot of current, area. water was rising. And it was clean it, water flush. Yeah, yeah. I know it stirred up some. It stirred some up, mud, so that's the thing is you can find all three water colors. You can find the clear, uh, the stained, or the really chocolate milk. Yeah. Uh, I was mostly focusing on the stained water. Yeah. A lot of areas that were stained water on Saturday, you know, that's what we had the rain Friday and Saturday. We got back to those areas and then uh, that water was just, to me, blown out. Some guys caught them in that, but yeah. uh, I had to adjust and kind of what, move closer to the side of the river. You just told me, but I'm going to record it. Um, your two best baits, where did you get them on? I got them on a mag draft uh, thrown with 20 pound fluorocarbon uh, and a was owner. Was it the one with the treble hook? Or the... No, it was the owner uh, beast hook. It okay. was the, the eight aught, uh, three eighths ounce. I oh, used wow. both the uh, six aught quarter ounce and the eight aught three eighths ounce. And for uh, the, yeah, obviously the, the eight aught will get a little bit deeper. And when I'm really, it's about speed. When I want to move that, that bait a little bit faster, uh, I'll use the, the three eighths and with the, uh, yeah, I'll use the quarter when I would just want, usually early in the year when I just want to really slow it down. And that, was, that was your moving bait presentation? That was my moving bait. So I had a lot of waypoints. So when we were pre fishing, the water was really clear and it was really calm. And I just went and marked, in this area in particular, over 300 uh, waypoints in like a two and a half mile stretch. Uh, everything, everywhere I saw fish, everywhere I saw a boulder, a log, a grass line because uh, I knew with the tournament conditions with the uh, with the rain coming and the wind uh, and, the, and the weather that I wasn't going to be able to see those targets so my goal was just to mark as many targets as possible and that water came up and sure enough I was it looked like I was just fishing open water you can't see anything it just looks like open water and, uh, and I just you know keep casting a subtle edge something there. there and sometimes yep. I take a few casts and uh, and I just bounce I wouldn't skip any waste any time in between I just make the casts on the waypoints and if uh, a lot of times I'd pull up there I'd catch one and then I'd throw in and they'd maybe just short strike the mag draft a little bit and if I still feel like there was some some fish there then I'd throw in my secondary bait which was a uh, Nico rig Z-Man bang stick with a little eighth ounce weight um, and sometimes they yeah, have 
on the sure first that, day. I'm sure, the, sure that's a Helgramite to them. Yeah, huh? It's about the right size for it, it to be a Helgramite. They yeah. love eating Helgramites. Oh, they love eating Helgramites, yeah. I've nice. cut down actually a little bit off of the bank stick. Uh, maybe five inches. I'd cut about an inch off, so it was yeah. about four inches. Nice. And, um, and yeah, and a lot, of, and they were loving that. The, the thing is, is it's you're by throwing the big bait at first, you're going to catch a lot of times the biggest fish. A lot of times, there's several fish in an area, and if I threw the bang stick in first, there's a good chance I get a couple of the little fish, and the big fish would catch on. I wouldn't end up catching those. So I'd always start off with the bigger bait, helps catching the bigger fish, and then if there was, uh, yeah, I knew there was still fish there, I'd throw that in and catch fish all sizes. But qu actually, the three biggest fish, all three of my 19s, came on that Nico rig uh, the first nice. day. Cool. Uh, second day, uh, the, the water came up a lot. They released that water out of the, the dam there up above. And uh, yeah, and the I threw a mag draft basically in one spot. I had 95 inches in uh, 32 minutes and lost four so fish, 218s, probably 219s. Like ledges, chunk rock, grass, there was, what? Yeah, so basically there was a gap in the islands. So there was water flowing through. Uh, in this in this gap in the islands and on the back side of the gap the grass there was a grass line and a little bit of a depression with some rock and yep. they were just sitting right in that rock just looking for things to come blowing through that grass line and they'd come up and get it and uh, so they were hitting the mag drought a lot of times two three times I threw out there they hit it hit it and then third you know sometimes third time they'd finally get it there's a big school of fish there all right here's the mag drafts i threw in the tournament they're all pretty beat up and uh, i'd constantly be switching these out actually just because that water color changed so often from muddy to clear so if the water was was really dirty i'd fish this one uh when it was stained i'd fish this one and when it got really clear i'd fish this one is that brownie yes that's brownie Albino and white back, I think. Or okay. Something. Those are the three colors. So brownie in the clear, albino in the in the muddy. In the stain. In the stained. In oh, the, no, sorry, albino in the muddy. Yeah, yeah. the white one. Yeah, uh, and then the white back in the stained. Cool. I like the color change. It's smart because I mean, you you look across there and it'll be, you know, muddy here, clear there, different color there. Constant, yeah, sometimes because I literally change it because there's so many waypoints. I move from one waypoint, make five casts with it, and then I'd move across the river, not up or down, but across usually is when that water color changes and then the water would get clear. I'd take it off, put this one on, make five casts, and then go back. And I would just constant, I mean, throughout the day, I was just constantly taking these off and putting them back on. It was just one after another. It was every, every cast. Literally. Very cool. Congratulations, man. Thanks. So we're going to, we got some other folks that may be joining us uh, in a little while. I think everyone kind of partied a little bit and sleeping in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You're the first one here, uh, but we're going to put in and do a little fishing. Go back to some and then, spots, uh, check it out. <laughs> yeah. And then each of us will start heading home this evening. Yeah. But I'm looking forward Good to drive for me. I, I've been filming Drew for the, the couple days and, uh, I knew it was getting good and uh, it was it was good to be behind the camera and capture that happening and uh, but it'll also be good to to wet a line after watching yeah, all that action I bet so, <laughs> hopefully they're still there let's go get some yep well let's let's put in see what we can catch cool. it's cool how that battery is attached right like that huh like yeah that. yeah it helps it's the yak attack the, the Nakwa. Yeah, yeah. And Jameson Redding is the one that showed me how to how to hook that up and it's uh it makes it so I can move this whole camera from place to place, from lock and load base to lock and load base. So um, Yeah. I think with the the water cooling off. Yeah, sure, let's go. With the water cooling off the jerk bait is, uh, y y you know, you can let it hang in their face a little bit and it'll help help them if they're a little bit slow to jump on it. So suspending jerk bait time is upon us. Uh, the battle though is to, is to really deal with the leaves and the, and the grass that's breaking. It's funny, it was clear on that bank, 
and then here in the middle it's muddy. Yeah, that clear water line is really small. That line more and more this way. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I looked at the dam where they, they had the three sections lowered, and it was, it was on either side and in the middle. And those were your, your muddier lanes, for sure. So, so Russ's uh, use of dropping waypoints on certain things when the conditions were low before the rise is really interesting. And I think what interests me most is that, you know, when the wind gets up, you can't read those real subtle, you know, little micro uh, disturbances as well once the wind is up. But if you have them on the waypoint, uh, I don't know. Waypoints really isn't something that I, I usually mess with on a river. And I think I really probably should. So, and you know, this is some of the growth that I get as an angler uh, fishing with with people that come to a river that I know really well and, uh, and learn their approach, which is different than There was a clear lane of water. I tied that one on. It's kind of white with a little bit of flash, gray back. Get out of here, it's muddy. Gotta put that one on. Pointer 100. The Roar Green Perch is just my best muddy water jerk bait. Looks like Russ got one. using that albino color and had to make quite a few casts uh finally get one to, to bite i missed i think four bites before one finally took it but i mean it's a big bait look how small their mouth is you know and for them to and they got it pretty good yeah <laughs> so nice. yeah we'll see if we can get some more there's at least a few more in there man he's hooked good too that's how you want him hooked during a tournament susquehanna smallmouth push back and let this guy run nice man See ya. Did you have the same water clarity yesterday when you were no, here? Or? No, it's, it's way dirtier. There was areas like this. That dirty water, at the beginning of the day, this was just stained water. And then that dirty water came in and started pushing itself towards the other side of the river. So you caught it as it was transitioning yeah, from it was stained time. or even maybe even a little clear to, to the mud that we've got now. Yeah, yeah. And it was better when it was stained. If today sure. was tournament day, would you think you'd stick with that in that mag draft or would you Yeah, but I'd just different? push I'd push I'd focus more on the stained water. I'd make a cat I caught my twenty in water about this dirty. My biggest fish at the end of the day, I traveled a long way to try to find some clear water. Even when I got there it was I don't know if it was quite this dirty, but it was it was pretty close. Uh, but yeah, midday I really made a, a switch and started working myself more to my waypoints on the other side of the river. And that's why I'm happy I got so many waypoints and really with this river, you got to get both the clear and dirty side. If you're catching them only on one dirty on one side and you're like, oh, this, I'm just going to focus on the dirty side, you can get yourself in big trouble because that can be blown out. And the next thing you know, you have nothing to fish. So, so I always... You know, do you have different rods rigged with different like? I mean, you said you were sw switching out the the mag draft out the colors. Base. I got but... yeah, I got all everything I might use. I kind of oh, keep. Gosh. I keep right here. I got a few different crank baits, a few different swim baits, a couple different chatter baits. So nice. just all the things that I and you really got to have a lot when you're dealing with different water colors within an area that you're fishing. Nice. Um, Keep it moving. I'm gonna keep throwing. Uh, I actually switched my my jerk bait color to yeah. to that one. I, I like, like 
that gold and, uh, flash and that the black lines, black triangles on it, that uh, Aurora Green Perch. And, I like it, it looks good. Yeah. Is that a Pointer 100? It's a Pointer 100 and Aurora Green Perch. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I think I've caught more true fives on that bait than any other bait. Gotcha. In mostly in cold, muddy water. So. Cool. Yeah, I never think of using jerk baits in, in muddy water too much. But I know where good. I talked to a yeah, guy these yesterday. Fish are good at finding it in the mud. Yeah, I talked to a guy yesterday. He said he was doing it and he was, he was crushing it. Nice. Looks like Ross is hooked up again. you didn't catch yesterday huh no it isn't i lost a big one that looked like this that i thought was upper 19s beautiful came off it might be him very cool all right let's let her go okay. all right looks like christine has joined us so Good christine's one. hooked up Put it back too quick. That was a, it was just like a 17. <laughs> just a 17. So Russ has shown me a couple places where he caught a lot of big fish uh, in the tournament. And I look at it and I just, it's, some of it's a head scratcher. It's just, the places I think that are, that have subtle disturbances on the surface that I look at and think, what made you stop there and fish that? And, and I think some of it is just that he put in a lot of time putting all those waypoints in and he works through all of them, I guess, and just finds the ones that are loaded up with fish. But like, you know, he got two nice ones and Christine came in and caught another one uh, on that, that first spot that he showed. And I just look at it and think, I, I would have missed it. I wouldn't have seen that. Or I wouldn't have really thought to, to put more than like, I don't even know if I would have made a cast. But it was the same thing I was fishing Jody Queen on the New River. His specialty was finding places that other people uh, float right through or just miss. And uh, the, the subtle places, like right now I'm fishing an obvious place. It's a grass bed and I'm throwing it into the eddy. I, I think there's fish in there. I wouldn't have thought there's fish back where he should they're there. All right, I am gonna holster the jerk bait. Uh, been out an hour and a half. I have not gotten bit on it, so it's a long time to stick with something that's not getting bit. Uh, Drew actually, so I could film the underwater footage with the drone, or not the drone, the dome. Not the drone. Uh, he gave me the spinner bait he used in the tournament, and uh, we filmed it. Um, I just filmed it at the, the ramp in that clear water just to get, get some uh, 
underwater stuff for that video. But now I'm gonna use it. <laughs> Alright, no bites so far on the uh, on Drew's spinnerbait, the sling blades. I think it's a three quarter ounce. Uh, I'm gonna go with the, the dirty white with my seven inch scented jerk shad and just make it go slow. <clears throat> See what happens. I've been out here a long time, haven't caught anything, and caught this monster. It's, uh, you know, went back to what I absolutely have a lot of confidence in. Jackhammer, 7 inch inch jerk shad, big profile. Uh, head of an island, grass bed, we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But, uh, this one is... It's over 20, 20 and a quarter. Yep. 20.25 inches. Slow day in terms of number of bites. I mean, it is 12.31 and I think we met at eight um, for sure. Those guys are getting bites. I tried to do a little bit different stuff to try to learn what they were doing and then just went back to what I know, which is the grass bed at the head of an island has fish, has big fish. And uh, that's a nice one. I don't think I have my scale. I think I took it off because, no, I do. Let's see what the weight is on this guy. He's four pound, 10 ounce. So, not a five, but a beautiful fish nonetheless. Nice. All right, let's let her go. So I'm going to put this away and kind of think through most of the time with, with that, you know, jackhammer, sent to, seven inch scent to jerk shad, um, I'm burning it. But this water is, is chilly. I'm glad I got my bibs on. And a week ago, a week ago, I filmed with uh, yeah. Russ and Christine and it was, it was comfortable to wet weight in. Today, I think you would start to get hypothermic wet wading. So we've had quite a drop in, you know, taking this and slowing it down. Hey, let's go over there. Let's take a look at the head of that island. And uh, that's what I've shown before. The thing that amazes me watching, <laughs> watching Russ come and be like, this is it, they're all right here. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't have picked that. I would pick this. I've, I've shown you guys this. Ooh, he's got my gears turning. He's showing me stuff that I've fished this river, you know, since the late 90s. And he's showing me stuff I'm missing. Important stuff. I like it. That means I'm learning. Let's look at this one. All right, we're out here. There's the head of the island. Lots of wood there. I worked on that. Yeah, it's all up in that. What until I got uh, that grass bed right up top, threw it past it, somewhere right around the, the tip where that grass starts. Was that, that fish was just sitting in there. Why? Why is grass so important to them? Well, it's where the food is. 
and the grass beds are shrinking. The wild celery, the stringy stuff that everyone calls eelgrass, I even did it a couple times this week, and my buddy Mike Naylor would be like, no dude, you know better I do, it's called wild celery, is in big clumps, is, uh, is breaking free. That's where the minnows have been living. Just like the trees leave their, let their leaves go, the subaquatic vegetation uh, lets loose and shrinks and it's fewer hiding places for the minnows with each rise. That's why they eat so well during a rise because the hiding places are disappearing. They're being flushed out and uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a good time for them to eat. seems like there's an eddy behind this island and this is like a current scene. Yeah, you know, what's crazy is I fished this in practice and Did I you? caught some fish here. Yeah. But Matt Ball, I guess, stayed right there in one spot and Russ stayed in one spot and I had to, I brought three torpedo batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Fishing, are, you know, around the islands and stuff. It's like I didn't, I wish I would have had fish just stacked yeah, Matt, up. Matt was like, what, right up here and he yeah. got how many inches? 97 and a half. Wow. So we're, we're wrapping it up here midday. Oh, look, Christine's got one last one. Nice. <laughs> so, what's uh, what's next on your schedule? You you know, doing the uh, we're musky fishing from here on out. I don't want to see another bass until the TOC. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The TOC is your next tournament. Nice.